Hi, and welcome to Creative One Studio. Welcome back to my wonderful subscribers. And if you're new to my channel, my name is Teresa Kogut and I design punch needle, cross stitch, and I'm an artist. I license my work. And this is my channel where I talk about all the creative things that I do. That's why it's called Creative Whims because I'm not like into one certain thing. I'm kind of all over the place. This past week was short because I did a video on Tuesday and today is Saturday. I was going to record yesterday, but I, you know, so Tuesday I uploaded the video. I worked Wednesday, had to, you know, fill orders. And then Thursday I'd had Ellery, my favorite day of the week. So here's some pictures of our beautiful girl. She is so chatty now and I love it. She just constant, oh, just constant cuteness. <laughs> Easton is doing great. Mama's doing great. Everyone's back in the, you know, the routine of everything. Everyone's healthy, so that's good. And then yesterday, Friday, we got, well, okay, so we were having a dishwasher delivered and Frontier, which is my internet connection or whatever, they were coming to give us an upgrade and hopefully speed up our internet. Well, both of them said they would be there between 8 and noon. So I had to stay up at the house. Well, noon rolls around and I hadn't heard from either one of them. Finally, around one o'clock, Frontier came. He was there probably an hour and he left. And it wasn't too long after that, maybe a half an hour later, they showed up to put the dishwasher in. And by the time they were done, my husband was home, you know, not long after that. <laughs> and then he left to go to our friends to his friend's house, Paul, and they brew beer together. So they, he went to go brew beer. And I just didn't feel like coming down to the studio and recording a floss tube video at that point. I mean, the day was pretty much over. So you know what I did instead? I designed a my first like legit sampler. And I will show it to you later in the video, but I'm super stoked. I had a blast doing it so much fun so that was pretty much it today we are going to a wedding it is noon right now and the wedding's at two so i will not be editing this and uploading it until sunday but anyways that's my life busy <laughs> uh so i'm still possibly going to release be kind because jerry sent it back to me she did the back stitching she said in like 10 minutes and so she stuck it in the mail that she said that way if you you have the option if you want to release it you can i like i said last week i already have six patterns to release so i may hold it off until january we'll see questions and answers mclam 2011 in the sketchbook Th th flip through last week or actually it was earlier this week but whatever um i had zoomed in on this santa and he looked like he was shoving packages in his gift bag and or in his you know bag toy bag and i mentioned drawing a snowman like holding the bag up so santa is pushing the gifts in and she said well what about uh putting an elf in there instead of a a snowman that's a great idea and I do have a bunch of elf paintings that I did oh god years ago for uh, village candle I did like a, a shade and all kinds of things so I do have a lot of elf sketches so that's a really cute idea it kind of makes more sense than a snowman doesn't it so thank you for that and then mm, oh 
then McLam 2011, same person. Are you going to Galleria? I wish I was going to Galleria. I did. I didn't even know about Galleria until I don't know if it was spring or um, the beginning of summer. But I heard about it, and I thought I, it probably was through Floss Tube that I heard about it. So I contacted them. The Inspired Needle, I believe, is who puts that on. And I asked them if they had any openings or anything, you know, let me know. But I was too late. So I asked them to put me on the waiting list for next year. So I would, I hope I get in because it sounds like an amazing show. If there was any way I could go to it this year just to go and see what it's like and to see everybody, I would. But it's just, it's not going to work out this year, but hopefully for next year. Okay, last uh, Tuesday, this past Tuesday, I had weekly whims, but I opted to skip it because I had too much going on and I didn't want my video to be too long. So this week, uh, weekly whims. All right, so on CBS this morning, I don't know if you watch it, but I love watching that. It used to work out a lot better for us when we had 11.30 mass because it gets done at 10.30 and I could get my shower and go to mass. Well, now our mass times are 9 which obviously if I go to nine o'clock mass, I miss it. The other mass time is 1030. So no matter what, I miss that show, which bums me out. But a couple weeks, two, three weeks ago, they were uh, talking about pet, not pet, animal cafes. What are they called again? Uh, I don't know, cafes with animals. And it was so intriguing because the one that they were showcasing or highlighting was these little miniature pigs, which is, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they're litter trained. I mean, do they just poo all over the place and you're sitting there eating and having coffee? It's a little weird. But, uh, so I got intrigued by that. So I went to the internet and looked up some cafes that have animals. And a lot of them are in Tokyo. I know they have some in the States that have, like, for cats and dogs, which, you know, that's kind of normal, cats and dogs, that, that makes sense. But y'all crazy over there in Tokyo. Okay, so they have the pig one is on, listed on there. Then they have one with a lot with cats, dogs. Okay, I saw these. Let me go to the other site. All right, y'all, this is, this is crazy hedgehogs. I'm going to put a link to this site so you can check it out. Harry Hedgehog Cafe in Tokyo, Japan. Then they have Meow Parlor in New York, New York. That's obviously cats. Kit T, like K-I-T and then T-E-A, Cat Cafe in San Francisco, California. The one I want to go to that's all the way in S South Korea is these little sheepies, little lambs, you guys. Would that be adorable? Look at the picture. That's so cute. But isn't that interesting? I find it interesting. Uh, then another cat one, another dog one. Oh, and then bunnies. Mrs. Bunny Cafe in Tokyo, Japan. A cat lounge, Portland, Oregon. Reptile Cafe in Japan, Yokohama, Japan. That's a little weird. Reptiles freak me out. So anyway, I... I just found it interesting, so I was looking that up. And then uh, another weekly whim is, I don't think I've ever mentioned this, but it's called Garana Energizer. I get it on Amazon, and I'll put a link below on where you can purchase this in my shop, my Amazon shop, but there's 200 tablets in here. I don't take them every day. I don't, I don't even take them every week. It's a natural caffeine so like if you are tired it doesn't give you the jitters if you are tired and you need a little pick-me-up take a half I've never taken a whole one I take a half the tablets are kind of big and you will like get through the whatever you're doing uh, the, how I found out about it was through my friend Kristen when we were going to the CMA Fest one year. I mean, it's like intense. And we were so tired because we were out late every night. And we would take a half of her and I would split one of these. And I never felt jittery. And then by the end of the night, you get home and it's like, wow, I wasn't tired at all. But you don't notice that you, you took this. 
So what I think is great about it too is that Ryan was over on Thursday to see Ellery and he asked if he could take some of these home and I'm saying, absolutely because 200 of these when you're only taking a half, that's 400 of them and you only take them every so often. So I share them with everyone. <laughs> but he took some home, he said, because you know, there's some days he's super tired at work and then he'll get an energy drink and he knows that those are so bad for you. And I'm like, yeah, this is way better. He goes, yeah, this is way better taking that than to get a, have a dang stroke or heart attack from energy drinks. So <laughs> at least he's, you know, aware of that. So Grana, good stuff. Uh, I mentioned this before the photo book app. I made a photo book of our trip to uh, Dolphin Island and those came in. So I, I had actually, I got one free and then I ordered uh, two more, one for Kristen and one for her daughter, Gabby. And then I wrote a really sweet sentiment in there for them. So now we have, you know, our memories all in this sweet little book and they're so inexpensive. It's such a nice gift. So I wanted to mention that again. All right, Hot Tool Curling Iron. Oh my goodness, I bought this Hot Tool Curling Iron. It it gets up to 430 degrees. It's, it's hot. This one is, I have one that's big, like when my hair, when, most of my videos are where my hair is a lot straighter. And so that was like a one and a half inch Hot Tool. And then this one is, one inch I want to say and then I have a half an inch so when my hair is super super curly that's when I let it air dry and I use the half inch and then like today I didn't have time to let it air dry so I blow dry it on like a low setting and then I use the bigger curling iron so anyway I have options that way I can have it more straight I can have it super curly or I can have it a little more like beach wavy but I like it because it has this extended barrel and this turns which makes it super easy to use but hot tool i'm telling you it's the best curling iron because it gets so hot and it gets hot very quickly so my favorite and then one last thing that you know is kind of a gross topic but i find it so important is it's called oxy powder and here's a here's a, what it looks like Get in front of my face. Oxy powder is it's oxygen based intestinal cleanser. Okay. I will have a link where you can buy it. This is um, from Global Healing Center, Dr. Edward Group. I, I found him on Gaia TV and he's he's got a YouTube, I think he has a YouTube channel, I'm sure he does. He is so informative and all natural remedies and things like that. Well, I'm gonna put a link to this and you need to read about your di digestive tract and how important it is to keep that moving. I, <laughs> this is such a weird topic, I know, but if you don't go every day, if you know what I'm saying, you can build up toxins in your system and not to mention you just feel horrible. I use this maybe once a month or every six weeks or I don't need it very often, but I'm telling you when you do need it, it is a miracle worker and there's no cramping. It's not, um, it, what it does is flushes your, your, um, intestines with oxygen one night. You take four of these at night and the next day it'll, you're amazed. It's amazing cleaned out until you know how it will react with your system if you have to work or you have something going on the next day or morning I would definitely take this on a you know a night the night before you don't have anything going on the next day but it's just important I I'm big time into like natural products and uh, organic foods and uh, natural remedies to heal ourselves and to make ourselves feel better so that's my public service announcement for you all right, so wrong page. Whips. All right, I was I mentioned earlier that I designed my first sampler. I have a couple cross stitch that I did like I think it was the first year that I 
started designing cross stitch and they're just small I've shown them on my my channel before but I wanted to do a nice big sampler and I just I had so much fun doing it and the way I've designed it you'll be able to do it as a big sampler and I forget the the stitch count I put it, I just put it on Instagram a little while ago. Shoot. It's, it's uh, no, that's not it. Da, 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 open recent. Here we go. So the stitch count is 264 by 320. And I think I have it right here. Okay, and it's going to be on 40 count. I'm going to have the model stitch on 40 count linen. I'm going to have it um, 1 over 2. So the finished side is going to be 13 and a quarter by 16 inches. That's going to be a nice size. Not super huge, but I mean bigger than anything I've ever done. So I'm going to show it to you. And this, what I'm showing you is what my... Max Stitch program shows if like as if it was stitched. This is how it looks in the program. So I gotta get to where I can see what the heck I'm doing. Okay, so there you go. So I love the okay, so in the corners it says faith, hope, and at the bottom it says peace, peace and love. Okay. And so I wanted something, I wanted a man and a woman in it. Now, as far as the colors go, I may change the colors a bit. I don't know. When I pull the floss, we'll, we'll know then. And I love it. It's got um, three cats, a white cat, a little brown dog, a little brown cat, and a yellow cat. It's got birds, different kind of funky birds, the alphabet, a couple times in there with some fun motifs. And then I love that yellow house with the basket and the little butterfly. There's um, quilt blocks all through it. And I love this flower basket. Oh my gosh. So anyway, what I was going to say is you can, you could just stitch this part and it would be a cool pillow or a, a framed piece or something. This, you could just stitch this part. And again, it could be a pillow or framed piece and the same here so I made it so that it could be stitch all as one or you can make it into three different pieces or you could do you could do the alphabet and the bottom part or you could do the top part with the alphabet you know how I mean you can piece it how you want it I think that's really fun so <laughs> I want to give a major shout out to uh, Teresa Vanat at Kitten Stitcher, Shakespeare's Peddler, because she talks a lot about samplers, and I love learning about them from her, and I love seeing the things that she has designed, and she talks about how to reproduce antique ones, and then watching Carol, uh, Saltbot Stitcher, she does a lot of samplers, and oh, God, her work is beautiful she stitches a lot of different samplers from a lot of different designers and it's just they're beautiful and I wanted to jump on the bandwagon especially because Teresa is doing uh, sampler September so that it's hashtag sampler September and you can go to Instagram and see what people are working on and she's inspiring people to work on samplers all the month of September so I decided since I had so much fun designing that that I want to design a sampler a week in September so I'll have four samplers designed by the end of September they're not all gonna be that big that one took me a long time I worked on it quite a bit and when Ellery was sleeping I worked on it and anyways it took me many hours but because you know I normally so I come out with a lot of charts a year and the reason being is because mostly most of the time I take a painting that I've created I scan it in the computer, pull it into Max Stitch, and then I just, you know, I have to, I still have to do a lot of work on it, but I'm not starting from scratch for all of my charts, if you know what I mean. Where this, 
basically I just went in and said, okay, what size do I want this? And then opened up a file. I picked a, a cloth color and then I just, I started designing the border and I knew I wanted a house in it. And so I didn't have anything sketched out. So as I'm designing, you know, I would, oh, that needs to be moved and I would move things around and I didn't like the, her dress. So I changed her dress. So it was a really fun way of designing and I'm stoked about it. And <laughs> you're going to see some more samplers from me. Oh, and then I, this is the fabric I'm going to have it stitched on a uh, 40 count weeks dye work straw. I'm so glad I had this because I didn't know if I had any 40 count. And I think that color is going to be absolutely gorgeous for this pattern. So I cannot wait to see it stitched. Can't wait. And I don't even have anyone lined up for stitching it, but I have someone of mine, so hopefully she can do it. What else? I don't have any other whips, no finishes, and no haw. Because like I said, I just filmed on, filmed, I just recorded. I'm sorry. Can't say filmed. I just recorded on Tuesday. Okay, so last week the giveaway was for the fall Punch Needle Primitive Stitchers magazine. And uh, I will insert the YouTube random comment picker right here. All right, let's see who is the winner of the fall 2019 Punch Needle and Primitive Stitchers magazine. Good luck. Our winner is NCS Boston. We live in Missouri, and for Labor Day, we traveled to Michigan to see our son, daughter-in-law, and the only grandson who is four years old. Had a wonderful time with family. Thanks for all you do. You are truly blessed. I'm glad your grandson is better. Well, thank you for that wonderful comment. That was so sweet. So you came to Michigan. I wonder if you were anywhere near where I live, which is Otisville, Michigan. So congratulations. If you could please email me and make sure that you use your real name and your YouTube name, and then let me know, remind me what you won, which is the magazine. Thank you everyone for your comments. Sounds like everyone had a nice relaxing weekend, marking the end of summer. Congratulations, thank you everyone for your comments. All right, so the new giveaway is gonna be just a pattern of your choice from my Etsy shop, if you are the one that wins next week. And this is the question for you, since we're talking a lot about samplers this month, do you like stitching samplers? And if you do, maybe let me know your favorite designer or you know, just elaborate on it a little bit if you want. And then the Chinese fortune teller, uh, Sim Swank, blue 33 was her or his choice. All right, B. L U E one two three three. Did you know? So did you know? Is fairly new to the Chinese fortune teller, and I'm gonna have to pause and pause here and just look up something, something on the internet that I think is interesting that you might like to know. And I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see about finding something about samplers. Since, like I said, we're talking about samplers. Uh, if you wanna know a lot about samplers, watch Kitten Stitcher, Teresa Vanette. She's very knowledgeable. She's very good at teaching and explaining things. If you're not watching her floss tube videos, you need to be. I'll have a link to hers below. Oh, I wanted to give a shout out to somebody. I watched their very first video. And I can tell you right now that I love them. Let me see. I'm so sorry. Brenda and Laura of Brenda and the Serial Starter. <laughs> I was walking on my elliptical today and I always watch floss tube when I'm doing that. And they popped up and it said floss tube number one. And of course, whenever I see that, I always want to watch that person because, you know, we need to support people coming on to floss tube. They're awesome. They also like samplers. And oh my gosh, was it, I think it's Brenda's, was it Brenda's place they were at and all the floss hanging behind her and oh my gosh. And they were just 
so fun to watch. So I will have a link to their floss tube channel. And uh, they, I mean, that was their first time and they did an amazing job. So kudos to them. I found something on the internet. I'm going to have a link below that you can read the rest of the article. I'm not uh, going to read this whole thing. It's pintangle.com. Uh, and the focus of her website is on hand embroidery and crazy quilting. Here you will find tutorials, free patterns, stitch instructions, instructions and tips, and stitch your eye candy. Very cool. And she has a book out. So yeah, I just, I just happened upon her. Anywho, a brief history of embroidery samplers. Like I said, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Many new hands to embroidery are not aware of the rich history of embroidery samplers. Samplers are often perceived as nostalgic decorative pieces associated with interior decoration. In the past, they have been a method of recording information about stitches, a way of learning stitches and before paper was plentiful, a way of recording patterns. This brief history of embroidery samplers touches on rich history of embroidery samples, samplers that is hinted at in commercially produced patterns. Many stitchers enjoy working on antique reproduction samplers. Others work some samplers, others work some samplers that depict family trees and comm commemorate events such as weddings or births. Alphabet samplers and growth charts are also popular or samplers that record a life event, a rite of passage, or some aspect of lived history. The function that samplers perform has, however, changed over time. One thing that remains constant, however, is that hand embroidery samplers have always been a record of stitches. The word exemplar or sampler is derived from the French word exemplaire. I don't know if I'm saying that right because I don't speak French, but meaning a kind of model or pattern to copy or imitate. The Latin word exemplum, meaning a copy, was by the 16th century spelt sampler, sampler, or exemplar. So there you go. And it goes on. I mean, this article is, is quite large and, or long, so you can go to it and read the rest of it yourself. But that's, did you know? I, the thing I didn't know the most on that was what, because I've heard exemplar before and I didn't know what that meant. The other thing is, I know Teresa talks about how it was a way for girls to practice their alphabet and numbers, like for schoolwork, and that the parents would proudly display it in the home because it was, you know, work done by their daughter that showed, you know, that their daughter was educated and also quite talented because I, you know, they, they would use it for their alphabet and uh, numbers, but they weren't following a pattern for the most part. You know, they put these houses in and stitched little animals and things like that. So they're really, it's just fascinating to me. And I love learning about it. I have a lot more to learn. There's a book that Teresa has on her site that I'd like to get. Anywho, that's it. Did you know? All right. Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your questions. Keep the questions coming about, you know, whatever my art, my career, my licensing business, or, you know, my designs or whatever you want to ask me, you know, I'm an open book. So, <laughs> so thanks again for being here and I appreciate all of you and I love this community and I'm so happy to be a part of Floss Tube. Everyone have a great week. Bye. Mm -hmm.